You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art ed? Who tried to spice it? Who art ed? Mr. Wood art ed me. <laughs> Either way, it, it's I ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought we'd great start. Welcome to Who Arted Weekly Art History for All Ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Since I used the AP Art History list to make this year's Arts Madness tournament more diverse, I thought today I should cover another one from that list, The Forbidden City. Just a reminder, uh, voting for this week's matches will close on Saturday. Be sure to cast your vote for your favorites and check back on Monday as next week we will be down to the final four. Now, on to the actual topic for today. The Forbidden City was built in the 15th century after a coup d'etat planned by, and forgive me on pronunciations here, Zhu Di, the fourth son of the Ming Dynasty's founder, Zhu Yuanzang. To solidify his power, he moved his army and the capital to Beijing, where he built the Forbidden City. The complex city within a city was completed in 1420. What started as a functional space for the head of state has taken on some more ceremonial roles and cultural significance over the centuries. The Forbidden City stands today as a testament to centuries of imperial grandeur and artistic mastery. The sprawling complex served as the palace for nearly 500 years, housing emperors, their families, and entourages. This massive space covers 180 acres. It is the world's largest palace, and if it were to go up for sale, it would probably be the world's most expensive real estate. I've seen it estimated at a value around $70 billion. It has almost a thousand buildings to manage state business and serve as the imperial residence. Still, while both state business and living quarters were housed in the Forbidden City, there's a clear division between its public and domestic spheres. I guess even 600 years ago, people were concerned about their work-life balance. The southern half, known as the Outer Court, encompasses the Grand Palace compounds intended for state affairs. This area was only accessible to men. It would include the emperor's formal reception halls, spaces for religious rituals, and state ceremonies. People would enter this area through the Meridian Gate. Officials historically gathered here before dawn, awaiting the emperor's early morning receptions. While the outer court was for state business, the inner court constitutes the domestic space dedicated to the imperial family, and that was situated in the northern part of the Forbidden City. Here, key palaces align with the central axis, like the Palace of Heavenly Purity for the Emperor's residence and the Palace of Earthly Tranquility for the Empress. The Hall of Celestial and Terrestrial Union, positioned between the two, serves ceremonial functions. Despite its grandeur, the Palace of Heavenly Purity eventually transitioned to ceremonial use due to just an impractical size, with subsequent emperors residing in the smaller Hall of Mental Cultivation. The Forbidden City's layout reflects the ancient Chinese belief in cosmic order and harmony. Its design is centered around a series of courtyards and halls, each carefully positioned to align with the cardinal directions and symbolize the emperor's authority over the realm. The buildings, with their intricate wooden facades, sweeping tiled roofs, and ornate decorations, also showcase the craftsmanship of generations of artisans. What truly sets the Forbidden City apart It's not just the architectural splendor, but also just the cultural significance. For centuries, it served as the political and ceremonial heart of China. It's a symbol of the imperial power and prestige. As the name Forbidden City would suggest, access to the complex was strictly limited. Commoners were forbidden from entering its hallowed halls without special permission. Still, across the moat and behind the imposing walls lay a world of artistic innovation and creativity. 
Within its confines, skilled craftsmen and artists labored tirelessly to create masterpieces of painting, calligraphy, ceramics, and more, all under the patronage of the imperial court. Among the noted features of the Forbidden City is the vibrant color palette. The buildings are adorned with vivid hues of red, yellow, each carefully chosen for symbolic significance. Red, for example, represents good fortune and happiness, while yellow is the color of the emperor, symbolizing his divine authority. Intricate carvings adorning the wooden beams, to the elaborate paintings gracing its walls, every inch of the complex is a testament to the skill and creativity of untold numbers of artists. Each detail tells a story, whether it be a mythological tale, a historic event, or a symbol of prosperity and longevity. In the 20th century, during Mao's Cultural Revolution, many historic sites around Beijing were bulldozed to make room for modern buildings. The Forbidden City was a survivor. It's an anachronistic little island, a centuries-old historic site in a bustling modern city. Today, it serves as a custodian of Chinese culture and heritage. It's both a historical site and modern museum. And despite the passage of time and the tumult of history, it has remained a symbol of national pride and identity visited by millions of people each year. While it is now open to the general public, greeting millions of visitors, still only about 60% of it is open to the public, truly. Um, I guess there is still some forbidden areas within the Forbidden City. This 600-year-old marvel is still awe-inspiring, standing as a testament to the power of art and architecture to transcend time and space, connecting us to the past, and will no doubt continue to inspire future generations. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.